Hello kings, queens, nerds, and geeks, Powder Milk here, and guess what, who's your daddy? Okay, that was bad. Hey guys, Powder Milk here, and welcome back to Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. Now guys, you didn't get to see this awesome screen from before, but hey, doesn't matter, we got right into the game. Now guys, um, as of this video, oh god, guys, ooh, hold on, uh, uh, oh god, guys, this game... I just love this game, guys. It's just so quirky in its own way. It just has its own style of things. Hold on, let me pull my shit to me. Um, it just has its own style of things, and that's what I like about it. It, like... Like, it's not afraid to cross the line in for dad jokes, or... Or, um... Some game developers are not... Uh, not really up to grabs for the homosexuality thing, like this game does. I know Undertale did a kind of a lesbian thing with Undyne and, and, um, and, um, fuck, I forgot her name. Why did I forget the name? Why? Oh, God. How did I forget my, my favorite, one of my favorite characters in the game? Uh, oh, well. We're gonna, we're gonna skip over that with, um, it was, um, ah, ah I, I can't stop thinking about it now. Crap. Okay, anyway, we're going to continue on with this, because we just uh, got out of the coffee shop, and we saw that creepy guy who kind of looked like a dark applied look. Like, he's about to pop up in a minute. Like, he's right right here. This guy. We saw that guy, and then we met this this uh, handsome devil here. And then there's this big guy right here that we met earlier. So anyway, we're... Oh, wait, oh, wait, we also met up with the uh, guy who actually looks gay. Like, and he had creepy kids. Like, oh, man, my phone keeps going off. Hold on. Well, anyway, let's get on with this. Sorry, it was just stupid te telemarketer message. I'm gonna continue. So we're gonna load. We were in the streets, I believe. Uh, where were we on this? Oh yeah, we were here. We were at the streets. Dad tip number 67. Try to exercise right. Oh, that's common sense. Uh, don't skip the corners. Hmm, what? Don't use metal utensils on a non-stick frying pan? Actually, um, that's my mom would say that. Have you ever seen a rich dad, poor dad? A, a good tire pressure is essential to an optimal mileage. Make sure to sweep under your tent so it makes sleeping so you don't sleep on rocks. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing that's a camping tip, not a dad tip. Man, uh, is this game not responding all of a sudden? Hold on. Just let it load. What the? And I'm just kidding. Oh, as we were walking home, I he hear a heavy footstep coming from behind us. Powdered, bro! Oh my god, the voice. I turned. I like how he literally said bro in the same way I did. I turned around and I'm greeted by a familiar face jogging up. Craig? Oh. Bro. Bro. Oh. Holy. Wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, but you look great. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act. Are you kidding me? He's ripped. A mi and a. This is my fr and Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Nice. Aw, oh, thank you. That, that last time I saw you, you were only about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. She picks up her tiny wrist and waves around. And, uh, River, uh, gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Uh-uh. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it's been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers, and the next thing we're both fathers. Where you been, man? I was working out in Cal working out in California and just relocated a business back in Maple Bay. No kidding, a man and I just moved to this side of town. How's Sma Ma Smashley doing? I mean Ashley. Ashley is her name. She's actually still going by Smashley, and uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River with and the twins. It's all about co-opter- TWINS?! You have three kids?! 
Ain't life something, bro? Right. <laughs> Cake Stan Craig is is a father of three. Aww. Cake Stan Craig? Oh, haha. <laughs> yeah, it was my old college nickname. He got it because he did a lot of cake stands. And it's the... It's that thing where you do a handstand on a egg and uh, then drink from the cake. Huh. Right. He was very good at it. And bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of a daily jog, and I gotta keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, the resistance training. You jog daily? I jog yearly. Je on January 1st, I promised myself that I would go on a jog daily for the rest of the year, but I gave up after 30 minutes, I just walk home. Oh. Well, I've never, I'll, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. Haha, <laughs> I don't know. Come on, it'll be fun. You, we can grab breakfast afterwards. Catch up. We could do a bro oh, brunch like the old, good old days. All right, sure. Sounds great. Great. Let's get it going. Be better get moving. Good to see you guys. I like how he's the next guy on our dating list. Craig gives you a little way, puts his e earbud back in, and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped when has kids. It's reeling. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Craig, I knew, was not fit in it to be responsible with any living thing, including especially himself. One time I watched him drink the entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Man, I opened up a new jar of marinara sauce. And uh, he opened up a marinara sauce when he drank it like it was just like a normal people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him, what the hell are you doing? And he asked, and I quote, I'm basically a smoothie, bro. <laughs> I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. He was like, totally a different person. Anyway, we better get home. I've had plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Now, anyway, <laughs> now, this is something new. So if we're actually going to, this is an actual dating simulator, if I, th what I think it is. That means there's history with this character, so that means something. Well, the other guy, you know, see, this actually has a large variety of choices, like whether you're like Ebony or Ivory, or um, you like, uh, are you a chubby chaser, or are you just like uh, uh, twigs? That's my, personally, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guy who likes who likes chubbies. Um, uh, but see, we got the. Uh, the living, um, beanbag chair over there, um, well, no, no, that's not a good word for him. Let's try to think about positive word for big people. So, uh, I, be I believe the porn term for, uh, big, uh there, there's a porn term for this, uh, big beautiful women. Let's call this guy the big beautiful man. And then there's the, um, the guy who owned the coffee shop. We're gonna call him, uh, the Rasta for now, because I can't remember their names. And then we have, um... We're gonna call this guy Dexter because his kids remind me of a serial killer. No, no, we're gonna call him Reverse Dexter. There we go. We're gonna call him Reverse Dexter. So, because his kid is normal, but he's but his kids are crazy. Like Dexter's kid is normal while he's insane. This case, he's normal and his kids are crazy. So, and the guy we just met, Craig. We're gonna call him. We're just gonna call him Keg. We're gonna call him Keg. Um, Amanda and I flop uh, down on the couch. Amanda ha has has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Too bad we're going to be putting all this stuff back in these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Aw, oh, Dad, it's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just, you're my little girl. I'm going to be weird here not having you around. I c I'll come visit and I'll text you every day. I'll make lots of- I'll take lots of pictures. Hmm. I mean, obviously, I am a photography major. You promise? Ah. Of course. Are you gonna be okay with- Are you by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. Yay. A dog? Forget it, art school. I'll stay for the dog. Is- Is that what it's gonna take? <laughs> Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck. I get it. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost to get <laughs> me in my dreams. To give up my dreams, I'm a woman with simple wants and needs. <laughs> well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. Amanda laughs. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. 
Speaking of college, Amanda darts for the envelopes and shovels through them. She pulls it out and throws the rest uh, at the, through the door. This is the McGolgan College of Art and Design. Open it. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Yeah, it's just like the entire my entire future, no big deal. That's kind of like every other person who wants to go to college's problems. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, uh, but okay. <laughs> I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Um, the administrative committee have reviewed your application, blah, blah, blah. Um, we... Her face drops. Regret to inform you that you're unable to offer you admission to the McGowan College for the Art of Design. No! No! Don't do that to me! It's okay, I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put my experience and stuff in my portfolio. Er, stuff in my portfolio. Uh, th their administrative officer told me that I just want to see portfolios or, or, or what, whatever. I put Amanda in a big hug. And you're an amazing photographer. I, I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snap at you up for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Ugh, God damn it. Ugh. Now that makes me sad. Are you actually fine or are you just saying that? Mm -hmm. I'm fine, really. Her face says the opposite, but you probably shouldn't push her on this. <laughs> oh, before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. Aww. So... You need me out of the way a, a, because I'm painfully uncool. I would choose more de elegant phrasing, but yes. Well, I ha- You know I'm conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you ha have to <laughs> place to- Place to yourself. Yeah? What are your plans? Quick, think of plans. Um, I am secretly the mayor of the town, gotta attend the uh, union meeting. I'm going clubbing. I'm just gonna go clubbing, though I don't particularly like clubbing, but it's the most logical sense in this situation. I'm gonna go on a nice out and tear it up at a dance floor, and the hottest place moves. The lawn mower, the sprinkler, uh, the running man, or who knows what kind of kids these days are going. Alright, but I'm not gonna come pick you up if you pull up everything- pull anything this time, not again. I'm just kidding, I'm actually going to go out and watch the game. Nice. Uh, like, which game? You know, the game. The one that's on tonight. Uh, uh. The game on TV, somewhere other than here. <laughs> okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna go do drugs and commit crimes. A light ar uh, light ar arson with the Emma's. I'm concerned you're hanging out with the wrong crowd. <laughs> and and <it's> drugs. <laughs> I don't know why, but this just sounds like something that me and Boz would have a conversation about. I would expect you guys to be up here with white collar crime by the po by this point. Maybe money laundering, or at least. I'm a street rat, pops. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? <laughs> yes, Dad. Just making sure. I'll give her a pat on the head. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? No, making fun of sports is pl it out. All right then. Do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Hey, don't forget you have that meeting with that English teacher tomorrow. Ah, uh, hmm, Mr. Vega. I actually knew a guy named Vega. Um, uh, yep, to only remembered. I'll be there. Uh, go, uh, wherever job you want, you'll make sure, blah, 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 keep your word, that's kind of common sense, um, keep your fucking word, uh, that's just, if you make a prompt, sleep is important, make sure you get, pl getting enough, hard to do when you're in the army, drink plenty of water, have to in the army, uh, exercise regularly, you'll stay healthy, have to in the army, <laughs> yeah, use your hips when throwing, well, good to know, <laughs> Eat a lot of broccoli. I love broccoli, by the way. I just, I just love broccoli. Anyway, try not to uh, make assumptions about people. That's quite the common. That should be common sense, you know. Yeah. Let's see. Um. Oh, wow. I guess I really don't think the plan's through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is. Amanda still wasn't sh 
showing me how to use the GPS on my phone. So I'm just going to pick up a direction and walk in it. So how old is the dad I'm playing as? Let's go this way. Cool, okay. We're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance. Could be... Big burnout neo sign hangs above the drive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? Alright, I'll do. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of the pool bar's sound. Back of the... Tr back as patrons laugh and joke. Pa oh, patrons, not patrons. Why? Okay, guys, maybe I've been drinking too much because I, I, patrons, one of my favorite drinks, by the way. Um, a string of uh, multicolored um, Christmas lights hung over the bar. Uh, bartender, I can s tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull, pull the seat eat at the bar. What will be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me up an ice cold beer, and I slip. I sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. Awkwardly, I turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, the team preference is not only playing, but currently in lead, which is always a good thing. A brightly colored mascot, which some kind of animal, does a cartwheel and slightly cheer my aired on my favorite team. Hopefully, I, I don't get any, any confrontational arguments about my fan with the opposing team. Several people in the bar were wearing distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe their uh, demeanor, their demeanor that, like me, the passion for the team is all in good fun. Hey, sailor, sailor. Uh, a middle-aged woman holding a nearly emptied wine glass slides up, up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Uncomfortably? Hey, sailor. <gasps> no, I have to do the voice. Oh, hello. Mm. Maybe I should act nervous, because apparently my character's gay. Oh, good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often? Oh, no, I actually just moved in this part of town, actually. I'm powdered, by the way. Mm. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is the, in the lead. If you keep this up, they'll win the game it with ease. Oh. oh, I love that team. I also love the game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. Okay. Okay, that was kind of thrown in there. My phone's going off again. Oh, hold on, guys. I'm gonna take a minute here. Okay, I'm back. Um, anyway, I'm getting the impression that she is. She's a little drunk. Um, uh, buy a gal a drink? Don't buy Mary a drink. Just, uh, maybe some other time. Uh, uh. Suit yourself, sailor. My, my, my guy doesn't need no woman. Mary saunters off, setting off her sights to the newest bar patron to enter. Happily watch the game over er, another beer. The game aim has gotten close in terms of point, a little close than what I am comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points yet from the other team, putting the team in the lead, I hear a furtive grunt from the other another man at the bar. Go team! This brooding man from the coffee spoon. He's sitting alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Oh my god, it's Darkiplier! Oh god! <laughs> Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, you must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is a far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say we... my team is superior. Um... Uh, that's where you're wrong, since it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, but we both back into silently rooting for the respective teams. The game is close, even both sides playing for their hardest to win, but in the end, the team, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple through the bar. I chase a respectful glance at the man drinking the whiskey. He raises his... Res he raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between the space of mutual love for the game. He, he motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. My name's Robert. Hey, that's my dad's name. <laughs> Dang. Oh, God, this is going to make it awkward. Okay, thanks. I'm powdered. You must be new here. Mary already hit, hit on you. Yeah. Robert chuckles. She's a she's peach. Well, she'll pick the best bar in town, and slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim's and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim and Kim running this place? No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. 
Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer. But I'll drink most most things. You like shots? Okay, guys, I love shots in personal reference. Uh, I like shots, I love shots. Ooh, shots, fired. Uh, I love shots. Thanks, God. Robert nods to Neil, who saves up two shots of whiskey, and he hands one of them to me. Here's to good health. We take shots, and whiskey burns down. But I try my hardest to, uh, to look tough. Wait, I think this is what makes makes friends is. Making friends is. Okay, powdered. That guy's at, uh... That guy is out of my friend league, but I think I'll pay my play my cards run. It'll be pals in no time. Hmm. Compliment his hand tattoo. Tattoo. What does it mean? It's a reminder. Oh no. Wait. For him to elaborate, but it seems that he's done untalking. Man, this guy's a mystery and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Maybe I should remind him of the tattoo. Robert signals the bartender for another round. So what are you doing here tonight? Uh, my daughter kicked me out of the house, um, running from my problems. Uh, not like forever, just she having a, a sleepover with her friends. Family type, huh? Single dad. Hmm. He gets up. I'll be right back, gotta powder my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative, but he must like you. Huh, I guess so. I have to, I gotta admit that Robert was a gruff charm to him, but if this guy th thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back in the bathroom, grabs his le uh, grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. Oh, you uh, heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar, find ourselves walking the same direction. I live in the cul-de-sac um, down, the, down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. Just... Finished pa unpacking today. Great place to be. Good neighbors, well, some of them. I'm guessing this guy's a loner. Who's that? We get to Robert's house and just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Powder. So are you doing this or what? What? You know, do you want to come inside or what? We wave a realization and rest me over me. I blush. Uh, smile and nod. Let's do it. I'm gonna go with it! Oh god! I follow him up to his house. He fumbles his keys for a second and unlocks the door. Leading me inside the moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me and grabs my hips. Come on. Robert takes my hands and leads me up the stairs and into what I assume is his bedroom. But it's too dark and I can't see anything but Robert's intense impression. Expression. He kisses me again. I can hear him shucking off his jacket. I clumsily take off mine too. His hands roam down my chest, and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. Oh my God! I uh, I don't normally do this. Do you want to stop? Surprising how mysterious this guy is. He's kind of gentlemanly like. I'll be honest. This is quite intriguing. No, I want to continue. I want to do this. I'm a perv. No. Good. Robert continues to unbuckle his belt and glides me back to the bed. Let's have some fun. Sunlight streams between. Okay, who was on top? I want to know. <laughs> or was it both? Or did you take turns? Sunlight streams in between the eights of the blinds. My head is pounding. I really overdid it last night. Wait a minute. This is my old house? Or my new house? Oh, right. I look around for Robert, but find myself alone. Hello? There's a chatter in the bathroom and the door opens. Robert is fully dressed and he grabs his keys. That was fun. Yeah, it was. You should go. That's certainly not what I was expecting. Well, uh, talk to you later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Robert cracked me a smile. Sure. Your clothes are over there. I hastily get dressed and show m myself out. The sun is unbearably bright and I need to lie down. I start to make my way back home and I suddenly remember. Amanda! I rush back home and throw open the throw the door open. Something smells delicious. Amanda? Amanda runs out of the kitchen and slightly disappointed. Oh man, I kind of was hoping you'd be gotten kidnapped and I was gonna ha have to come rescue you. Does she know he's gay? I just want to know. The, the, wait, does Amanda know that Powdered, in this case, is gay? Like, um, I made a friend at the bar last night and ended up sleeping over at his place. Where are the Emmas? They left a little while ago. Oh, you guys have fun? 
yeah, watch some movies. Uh, ate snacks, stole a car, you know, usual sleepover stuff. You teens are so you teens teens and your larceny. <laughs> so this breakfast that's cooking and what's that all about? Well, there's hash browns, eggs, and bacon. Can I? Yes, you can have some breakfast. Bless you, sweet child. Your head throbs. Ugh. You gotta have something. You gotta do something about this hangover. Amanda, your lo your loving father might have uh, overdone it last night. Yeah. Oh, somebody's hungover. Father of the year. You shouldn't ha happen to have aspirin or. Yeah. I guess just the thing. Hang on. Rana runs to the fridge, pulls out a jar of pickles. Rana, what? Drink this. Pickle juice? Yep, it's what I used once, and uh, I assume someone would use it. I would also assume that it works pretty well. Although I've never tried it before, and I won't try it, obviously. Amanda Ann, who gave you the alcohol, what was it? <laughs> Dad, chill. Amanda, I never ha added an ounce of chip to my life, and you know oh, that by of my chill. You, I have never had an ounce of chill in my life that you should know of that by now. You better not be drinking alcohol in this household. Uh, just drink the juice. This better work. I dip out a sip of the tart juice. No, no, no more than that. Way more than that. I mean, I assume. Watch it, you. Drink more pickle juice and help yourself to a delicious breakfast that Anna has graciously allowed you to partake in. After inhaling some hash browns and, dr uh, uh, and dunking several pieces of bacon into a, a runny egg yolk, you start my, uh, to feel a little better. Amanda grabs her backpack and keys. Well, I gotta get to class. Don't forget to meet, eat with Mr. Vega, okay? He said it was important. Love you. I'll be there, knock. I'm dead, kiddo. Anyways. Oh, <clears throat> can't English. Always do. And we do our secret handshake. And she's off. And I get a little work done at home. And before I glance at my watch and see it's almost time for the meeting, I hop in the shower, change clothes, and head my way, still a little hungover. Exercise regularly and you'll stay healthy. Obviously. I, we just went over this earlier. Oh, God. Guys, I love this game. Like, we already got laid. This is the second episode, and we already got laid. <laughs> I arrive at Amanda's school and check out the front desk. They give me a, a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I barely awake and feeling pretty, uh... Hot. <laughs> Can't English! Can I speak English? Hang... <laughs> Fuck that word. But, uh, hopefully nobody will notice. <laughs> I check my watch and I really have to see that only two minutes late wait. Was it 103 or 108? I stop at the youth standing in the locker, approach their help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vegas' classroom is? The youth turns and looks at me up and down in heavily lined eyes. What the fuck? Ugh. Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Do Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know, have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Ugh. Fine. Up those stairs in the left. Can't miss him. Um, I head up the stairs around in Mr. Vegas' class anywhere. A couple of minutes searching, I head back downstairs. This punk you sent me to the wild goose chase. Get back to where your little girded way is standing, fully ready to give him a peace of mind, and then suddenly a head pops to the classroom next to his locker. Mm -hmm. Lucian. That guy I saw! Who is this guy? He reminds me of, like... He reminds me of, um... What's his name? Um... I don't know his name. But, now, what's the name I'm looking for? Lucian. Do you have a third period to get to? Uh, fine, Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I, I glittered at him and he walks away. We're not... Uh, cool. Um, um... You must be powdered. This period's almost over. You should mind and waiting in the back. Hmm. Hmm. Mr. Vega lends me in and uh, take a seat. I'm gonna become comically small. Uh, one of the comically small students' desk in the back, and I 
might be stuck in this. Oh, oh. All right, where were we? Who, who can we tell about the unreliable and narrator of J.D. Selinger's Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin. Colin stands and goes through the air and he blows into a crook of his elbow and makes a fart noise. Hmm. The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny. Colin, please sit down. Hmm. Now, Colin Caulfield, well, there's an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell over the end of the period rings and all of the students immediately get up and make break for the door. What? what? Remember to do reading and answer the, the responsible questions on page 194 and the textbook. No, I should do a voice for this guy because this guy... I, I need to do a voice for the guy. Um, I, I want to do a Snape voice because of the text page, but I don't know. Remember to do your reading and answer the responsible questions on page 194 in your textbook. I don't know what kind of accent I'm doing. Nobody listens. Oh, oh. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Um, um. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Uh, uh. Both, you know. Budget cuts. Right. Oh, oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Uh. Uh, Please. Oh, his name is Hugo. Please call me Hugo. <laughs> I don't normally do these in, uh, in pro, um two parent teacher meetings, but I'm sure you know Amanda is a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? I don't know. I don't Amanda know. has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Si recently, though, she's been fa falling behind. She's got. She's not completing the assignments. She has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to uh, senior, senior, senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda had always shared everything with me. It hadn't seemed to cross my mind that something might be wrong. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? She has a tendency to bottle things up. I haven't noticed anything different about her. But she always has a tendency to be happy, a face, no matter what. See, if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you, but a great deal. Could you appreciate your guidance? She keeps heading down this road. I don't know. I, don't I know, know how important that art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on a scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Mm -hmm. Anytime. On my way out, I stopped and take a moment and turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Oh. Yes? Oh. Ever ca catch that, Rye? Ah, ah. Yes. I leave the classroom and make my way to the school. I still a little bit in shock of Amanda to be able to hide all so well. Hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force of positivity in my life, especially after I lost her mother. Amanda must be done with the classes and I'm, it's for the day by now. I'm sure I'd be able to appreciate a ride home. Or maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually gossiped about your celebrity crushes. So, you talked to uh, Mario Baldi the whole time? Oh, she knows I'm gay! Oh, my character, that is. Um, <laughs> it was a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Um... We'll go to the mall food court. Does the does that sound good to you? Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can't a bit dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me? Will you buy me things? I will buy you things singu Buy you a thing singular. Sounds like a deal to me. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on the phone. I should say something. You know, something when a kid gets older, he finds a way to keep things hidden from her parents. And that's okay because something that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have a parent's perspective because you know maybe parents also have dealt with similar situations. And maybe they're a little cooler than you get them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class that... And that, you're not turning it in things. Things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. It's fine. He's fine. 
The pulls out to stop up the lights in Amanda's eye, and she's still oh, texting. I want you just. I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh huh. I can tell whatever this is. She doesn't want me to know about it. And it that's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed out that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's a. Uh, I don't think you'll get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Oh. Oh. Noah. Who's Noah? Oh, high school crush. My friend. Does he go to your school? Yep. Do you like Noah? What? No. Dad. Ugh. You can't believe you would. Dad. I need. I mean, jeez. Why would you. Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry. Just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Okay, okay. Jeez. Now, now my parents never understood the difference. See, I had a lot of female friends in high school, and that's actually, I like, a good majority of my friends were, were female. And, hey, it's just a natural thing. Friends and, friends can be male and female. Jeez. Uh, this is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns to the radio. I guess the conversation is over to the mall, then. Um, actually, guys, before we continue on to the mall, we're gonna have to pause this game. Well, before we, yeah, before we continue on, yeah, we gotta pause the game. I got stuff to do and, and all that. It is a weekend, guys, and I also gotta prepare drunk videos for su Sunday. So, anyway, guys, um, I'll catch you guys later, and stay dirty, my friends. Bye-bye!